A prominent guardian to the entrance of Mexico's National Museum of Anthropology, this megalithic sculpture comes from Coatlinchan, Mexico State. Contemporary with the pyramids of Teotihuacan, it resembles figures representing the powers of rain, most famously expressed by the Aztec rain lord Tlaloc. However, archaeologists have pointed to the conspicuous skirt, yielding the conclusion that it cannot be Tlaloc because Tlaloc is male and never wears a skirt. I respond by asking, why not? Hello, this Eye of the Serpent series will explore Native American alternative genders, specifically third and fourth genders, through common themes in North, Meso, and South America. After exploring these concepts, I will turn to the question whether they count as transgender in popular culture. You may have also encountered the phrases Burdash and Two-Spirit. In this series, we'll explore the limits for either as a general term. Native institutions around the third and fourth genders have been documented most thoroughly from Western North America, and it is important to explain what these mean before going too far ahead. But first, what is gender? Genders are social categories informed by ideas about the male and female sexes and distinguished by behaviors and practices. Culture shapes beliefs about gender, so these will therefore vary across societies. While every society has guidelines about the two basic genders of masculine and feminine, many regions worldwide have seen the existence of a third gender, a person born biologically as a man but identified culturally as a woman. In a few places, even a fourth gender, a biological woman who identifies as a man, exists as a social category. This series will show examples of both from cases in North and South America. It is also important to clarify that, while one's choice of clothing and ornamentation may count as gender expression in Native American settings, dress is not its foremost criterion. It certainly comes to first attention from a Western perspective, but Harriet Whitehead's study has shown that the most important guide to Native gender identity is occupation, the womanly things a person makes, more so than what she wears. We must consider native gender on social, economic, and spiritual terms in addition to the sartorial. These will become clear as we turn to North American examples in the next episode. Join us for the following installment.